love you, Lord, for you hold my destiny. Come on, help me sing it to him. You alone are all I need. In you alone, in you alone I am complete. Come on, sing it one more time. You alone, you alone are all I need. For you hold my destiny. Come on, church. You alone are all I need. In you alone, in you alone I am complete. Come on and sing it with me. Draw me, draw me, Lord. Draw me. Draw me, Lord. And I'll come running after you. I'm gonna run after you, Jesus. I'm gonna run. Draw me. Draw me, Lord. And I come running after you. Tell him you alone are all I need on this morning. Cause you alone are all I need. For you hold my destiny. You alone are all I need. In you alone, in you alone I am complete. Tell him to draw me, draw me, Lord. Sing it, church. Draw me. Draw me, Lord. And I'll come running after you. Gonna run after you, Jesus. Sing, draw me, draw me. Good morning, and welcome to another morning prayer broadcast. Once again, I'm Jeffrey Zimmerman, filling in for Pastor Sean today. As always, I am so honored and privileged to be able to do that, to be able to minister to the wonderful saints of the Most High God to be here with all of you sharing the word of God. My wife Melanie and I are always so happy to minister to God's people. We love working with Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy in the ministry. They are wonderful people. And uh, we, we, just, we just love serving with them in the kingdom of God for the kingdom of God. And so we've been, we've been in our series, Your Keys to Spiritual Victory. And today, we're going to talk about just be yourself. You know, um, I've been with Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy for about 26 years now. And, uh, you know, there was a time when I had to be discipled. You know, I had to be taught and trained. Because, you know, I had to learn how they function in ministry. Every ministry is different. Every ministry has a different way that they function and so forth, but, um, you know, when it comes time for me to operate, for me to minister to God's people like I'm doing today, Pastor Sean always tells me, just be yourself, you know, don't try to be like somebody else, don't try to, you know, just be yourself. We're going to see that, uh, what we're talking about today in the life of David. Everybody knows the story of David and Goliath. And we're going to see how just being himself gave David the victory in this situation. Let's pray. Father God, Melanie and I join our faith with your wonderful people today. God, as we minister the word of God, I pray that you would speak to each person's unique situation. Lord, Let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to them today. Let the message be so simple that even a child can understand what thus saith the Lord. And Lord, give your people victory 
in every situation, whether it's victory in their finances, victory on their job, victory in their marriage, victory with their children, victory whatever station they have in life, wherever they are, whatever they're doing, give them victory in Jesus' name we pray. And somebody said, Amen. We're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning with verse 25. So, to give a little background here, David, remember, was out in his father's field tending the sheep when Samuel came to David's house. And uh, they called David from uh, tending the sheep, and Samuel anointed David as the next king of Israel, right? So David has already been anointed by Samuel. Uh, but he stayed in his father's field because that's where God had him at the moment. See, <laughs> sometimes when we get anointed and we know we're called by God, some of us try to move too fast, you know? Some of us try to get ahead of God and we think we need to jump up and do God's will and leave everything and just do God's will right now. We already talked about Jesus when he was 12 years old. And even though he knew that he must be about his father's business, he was subject to his parents. He submitted himself. And it was another 18 years. He was 30 years old before he began ministering. And then we've talked about Moses. Moses was 80 years old when God called him out of the burning bush. But see, it doesn't always take everybody as long as that. Because in this story, David, rather, was still a teenager. I think he was about 15 years old. So it, it just all depends on the timing of God. That's what's important. You know, it, even when you're anointed, just, just wait on God. Don't be in a hurry, you know. Don't, don't jump out ahead of God because you can mess things up really bad trying to get ahead of God. You know, just, just chill out, you know. Just, just stay where God put you and let God do it in his time. Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy have told me many times, preparation is never lost time. Amen? And so... The men of Israel, so, so now David was sent by his father to bring food to his brothers who were on the battlefront uh, in Israel, and he wanted, he was supposed to go ask them and see how they were doing, you know, and uh, when, by the time David got there, uh, Goliath had been uh, coming out every day for 40 days, uh, hollering at the children of Israel to send somebody out to fight him defying them really you know and for 40 days nobody did anything they 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 hid and with their uh uh armor on their knees knocking against each other you know <laughs> shivering in their boots you know and so uh, uh this is what D david walked into so this day david was obeying his father he wasn't even trying to be part of the battle and he heard the words that goliath was speaking so he went and asked him he said Ain't nobody going to do something about him? And verse 25 says, The men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to divide, defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter in marriage. He's going to give him a wife. Amen? To all you single guys out there. <laughs> And he's going to make his father's house free in Israel. Guess what? He's not going to have to pay taxes. What? Now that, that's the kind of deal I can get a, I, I, I can live with, you know? <laughs> Amen? That, that, that's a really, that, that, that's, that's too good to be true almost, you know? And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, What shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine? He says, tell me that again. David wanted to hear it again. He was encouraging himself. He already knew he, he was going to 
attacked this joker. But now <laughs> he had he had all these things the king was going to give him. He's like, now tell me that again. I want to hear that again. You know, da David was getting happy. And so uh, the people told him again what, what King Saul was going to do. So in verse 31, it says, when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of this giant. Thy servant will go fight with this Philistine. I'll go. He's telling King Saul, I'm ready. I'll go. See, David's anointing was kicking in. See, he had been anointed by Samuel sometime before. And David had no intention when he came out of, you know, uh, uh, going to battle. But when he heard this giant not only defying Israel, but defying God himself, David said, no, this, this got to stop. I, I got to do something about this here. And so his anointing had stirred up on the inside of him, and he was ready to, to, to take this man out. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Folks, let me tell you something. Don't ever let anybody despise you or talk down to you because of your age. You know, sometimes when young people are called by God, some people look at them and say, they're too young, they can't do nothing. You know what? Don't let people tell you that. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. Because there's always going to be somebody, regardless of what your age is or your, your lot in life or whatever it is that you do, there's always going to be somebody that says, you're too young, you're too old, you're too tall, you're too short, you're too this, you're too that. Don't listen to that. Amen? If When God gives you an anointing, then... God is the one who decides when and where that anointing will come out. Just leave it up to him. Amen? And don't let people despise you because you're, you're this or that. David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Now, <laughs> you and I, if we'd have been shepherds and a lion or a bear came in and took one of the sheep, I'd be like, well, you know what? You can have that sheep. No problem. I got my dad's got plenty, you know, and it's just a little one. No problem. Go ahead. Bless you, you know, <laughs> and then I go hide somewhere, you know, not David. David said, I went out after him. David wasn't playing and I smote him. And I delivered the sheep out of his mouth. See, David was anointed. And even in this humble setting, where nobody else was watching him, by the way, where this creature who was bigger than David was, who had teeth, sharp teeth, sharp claws, David wasn't about to let this animal take even one of the sheep that were under his charge. Amen? And the crazy thing is, this wasn't even David's sheep. This was his dad's sheep. But how many of you know that you, God has to be able to trust you with what belongs to someone else before he can trust you with something that belongs to you? See? This is the difference between a shepherd, and a hireling. If David had been a hireling, uh, just somebody that was, was there because he was getting paid, he'd have probably let that sheep go on ahead to get eight, you know? But David was a shepherd. David had value. Those sheep had value to him. And he said, when he arose against me, when that bear and that lion arose against me, I caught him by his beard. <laughs> oh, God. And I smote him and slew him. David was serious. Your servant slew both the lion and the bear. 
and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. So to David, this giant was no different than a lion or a bear. See, when you're anointed, you don't see the problem. All you see is that God has the power to deliver this thing into your hand. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And so Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Now, here's where being yourself comes in. Verse 38 says, Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. Now, David had already told Saul, I killed a lion, and I killed a bear. So it's obvious that David's anointing was all David needed. But see, King Saul was in rebellion against God at this point. See, a real man, a woman of God, will never ask you to be anything but yourself when it comes to functioning in the anointing that God has placed on your life. Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy tell me all the time, just be yourself, you know? But this man was trying to turn David into something he was not. And David girded his sword upon his armor. He put it on. But he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. I, I, I don't know anything about using this stuff. I've never used it before. This stuff isn't going to work for me. I got to go with what works. I got to go with what God gave me to use. The tools that God taught me to use and trained me to use on the backside of the wilderness where nobody else was around, that's what I got to go with. So he took the armor off of him, took his staff in his hand. He chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script, and his sling was in his hand. This is the weapon that God had trained him with. This is the weapon that God had given him that he had won the victory with before. So David was just being himself. He drew near to the Philistine and then jumping down to verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone. You know the story. David ran out to put that stone in that sling, slung it around his head and let fly. And that stone sailed through the air and God made sure it hit the giant right between the eyes. And down he went. He smote the Philistine and slew him. So, one of the keys to victory is just be yourself. You don't have to try to be somebody else. You don't have to try to be something you're not. Or use something that you're not used to using. You know, just be yourself. I wonder if there's somebody today that would say, Brother Jeff, I know I have an anointing in my life. But maybe you feel like you need to be somebody else. Maybe you feel like you aren't good enough. Maybe people have told you you're not good enough. Like we said before, maybe people tell you you're too tall, you're too short, you're too big, you're too small, you're too old, you're too young. You know what? You are exactly what God made you to be. The Bible says that God is not looking. Uh, 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 Catherine Coleman said it like this. God is not looking for golden vessels. God is not looking for silver vessels. God is looking for yielded vessels. The Bible is full of examples like this one. Of God taking someone that didn't look like he amounted to much at all. 
and using him mightily. Father God, Melanie and I join our faith with your people today. Lord, encourage the hearts of those listening today. Let them know that they are exactly what they need to be. That if they'll just surrender to you today and let you use them, Lord, that you will do great and mighty things in their lives. Robati alalababayaki. Karabati alalalalayasi. Rabataya kalalalalalayasi. Robati alalababayasi. Just lift your hands to heaven today and just say, Lord, here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. The Lord can use you just as you are. And he will give you the tools that you need to do his will. Hallelujah. And you will be amazed at what God will do for you when you just be yourself. And just be obedient. Amen. To support the work of God, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinderministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have it on your smart, on your smart devices. You can also give through the Ministry Zell account. The Ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the Ministry Cash App account. The Ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas 75070. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you, we appreciate you, and a huge thank you to our partners who make this broadcast possible. We love you. We'll never take you for granted. God bless. Bye-bye.